Okay, this is uh, Algebra 2, Section 5-2, page 322. It's composition of functions. So we're going to talk about composition of functions. Okay. So a function is where you put a value in and you get a value back, correct? A composition is just like music. There is more uh, than one function. Uh, let, let me put it this way. Let me change that. And let's say uh, I like to call it a function of a function. That's a composition. So it's taking one function. Now, you know how to add them from yesterday or today's assignment. You know how to add them, right? Mm -hmm. And you know how to subtract them, and you know how to multiply them and divide them, right? And all that, right? Well, a composition of function looks like this. It has an open circle of x. So this is an open circle. It actually like, looks like the word fog, okay? In the book, they do a nice job of making this a smaller, okay? So um, it, it means this, um, f of g of x. So what it means is taking the x value putting it into the g function, and then putting that answer into the f function. I'll say that again. It means taking the x value, whatever that value is. It could be a number, it could be a letter. Putting it into the g function, then taking that answer and putting it into the f function. That's a composition. Now, if I turn it around, uh, some kids call this goth. Uh, it is g of f of x. And now let me explain this. This is taking the value of x, whatever it is, putting it into the f function, taking that answer and putting it into the g function. So they are completely reverse of each other. Now, if you're wondering what that means is, let's give you an example here. Let's say that we are given, okay, we are given f of x equals, um, let's say x squared minus 4 and um, g of x equals 2x plus 1. Okay? So let's talk about different things that we could do. Uh, we could go um, f of, um, excuse me, we could go, and, and the book I think uses this, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, f of g of x. Uh, let's, let's go 3. They use 3. So what I do first is this means, and, and some people like to write it like this because then they know that you put the 3 in the g function because it's right there. So I, put the, I take f up and I take the 3 and I put it in the g function. So I put it in here. I put 3 in for this. So f of 2 times 3 plus 1. Okay. So that is um, 6 plus 1 is 7. So we want f of 7, correct? So then I take the 7 and I plug it in here. I get uh, 7 squared minus 4, which is 49 minus 4, which is 45. Do you understand that? Now, if I reverse it, g of f of x of 3 in this case, um, I take um, g of f of 3. So I'm going to put the 3 in the f function first. So I put g in, and I go 3 squared minus 4. And that is g of 5 minus 4. 9 minus 4 is 5, correct? So now I put 5 into the g function, and I have 2 times 5 plus 1, which is 11. So you can see you get two totally different answers depending on which composition you do. Any questions about that? <clears throat> Mm -hmm. All right. Are either of those right? What's that? Are either of those right? Or do we have to have both at the time? Well, it depends on what they ask you. If they ask a f of g of 3, then you got to have this answer. If they ask you of g of f, you got to have this answer. If they ask for both, you got to have both. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So let's say that we have a function, and this time I'm going to write the function as a set of ordered pairs. So the f function is 1, 8. This comes out of the book, too. 
0, 13, uh, 15, 11, 14, 9. Okay? All right. And then we have a G function that is 8, 15. Five one, ten fourteen, nine zero. Okay, all right. So the question is, <clears throat> is we want to find all the values of f of g of x. Okay, all right. Now watch what happens. Uh, we start with the g function. Okay, we start with the g function. Actually, it's, it's almost like reading right to left, isn't it? So uh, what we want is we put in the first g function we have. So we look at g, the first x that we have, the first x, because that's your x value, is 8, right? Okay? You got that? Yep. So we're going to go f of g of 8, which is f of what? When you put 8 in, what do you get? 15, thank you. And then we go up here and we find f of 15. So we go up to the f function, we look for 15, what's the value at 15? 11, so your answer is 11. Do you understand that? Bhutan, I lost you. Okay, so we start, the first value is eight, all right? And so um, we go f of g of eight. The g of eight is 15, okay? Then we go up to the f function, we find 15 and y value is 11. Okay. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to find the next g function, which is g of 5. Yes. And so g of 5 is what? 8. No. G of 5, here's g, here's 5 is 1. So now we go f of 1, which is 8. Okay. You are a step ahead of me, right? Okay, what is um, the next one? F of G of what? N. And so just tell me what that one is. 14. 14? 14? And then 9, right? So the net last one is 9. Okay, so the, the directions will say what is the domain and the range. So the domain is all the values that you put in. Okay? So the domain are, what do we put in? We put in what? Eight, eight, five, ten, and nine? Yeah. So we put in five, eight, nine, and ten if we put them in order, right? What did we get back for the range? What did we get back? Well, we got 11, 8, 14, and 9. I didn't put that one in order. Why is there 9 in both of them? What's that? There shouldn't. Uh, well, if we put in 9 for that. We put in, for this one. If we put in 9, we would have got, got 0. Nine and we put 13. in 0. Oh, it should have been 13. This should be 13, shouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, goodness sakes. This it should be, be the top one. This would be 13. Okay, okay. Yep. Questions about that? Yeah, I got one. Yeah. yeah, what's your question? Well, if it doesn't, like, if there's not one up in the F, it's good. Then, then it, it does not exist. That's a great question. Okay, let's, let's reverse it, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, let's take G of F of X. Okay. This is Bo's question, okay? So remember that we're going to start with the F function now, okay? So let's go to the F function. See where my left hand, this finger is? We're going to start with that. So we're going to start with um, G of F of 1, okay? So F of 1 is 8, right? So then we go down here to 8, and so we got G of 8, which is what? 15. 15. Okay? I'm going to move it over here so I have a little bit more room. Now we go g of 0, right? Or g of f of 0, correct? Mm -hmm. 
All right. What is f of 0? 13. 13. We go down here, and guess what? Mm -hmm. There's no 13. So this is undefined. Did everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Yes, Addy. Where did you get 14 in the range from? Um, did I make a mistake? I got it right here. Here are the ranges. F of 10, F of G of 10, did I screw up? 10 and 14, 14, oh, that's where the 9 came in. This should be 9. Oh, my apologies. That's, and I think, I think uh, Harper might have been trying to tell me that too. Right? Okay. Does that make sense, Addie? Yeah. Okay. All right, so Addie, you kind of over here. Okay. Um, so let's say that I got G of, what's the next one? 15? Mm -hmm. F of 15. Where's this value coming from? It's coming from right here. So uh, F of 15 is 11. We go down here. It doesn't have 11. It's undefined. It's undefined. does not have an 11. Okay? So the last one is G of F of 14. Because that's the last one here. 14 is 9. We go down here, and 9 is? 0. Zero. So now my domain is, what did I put in? Uh, it's all the, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Yeah. So it's 0, 1, 14, 14 and 15. All right, I'm going to try to put the range in order this time. The range then is 0 and 15, right? There, there are two of them that are undefined, correct? Yeah. Does that make sense to you? So the domain is the so the domain is always what you put in, and the domain is what the range is what you get out. Yes. Yep. Okay. Now sometimes you don't put numbers in. Okay. Sometimes you don't put numbers in. All right. Let me give you an example. Let's say that I had um, f of x equals two x minus five. Correct. And g of x equals 4x. Okay? So if I go f of g of x, notice that I'm, I'm, I went back to brackets. It is brackets or parentheses. I do not care. This book uses brackets. Um, and I want to put um, this in. I'm going to put x into the g function, right? Really, when I put x into the g function, I get exactly what's there. Do you understand that? Okay, now I'm going to take f of 4x. Do you understand that? Because g of x was 4x. Okay, so now I'm going to put the 4x into this function. So for every x in here, I'm going to put 4x in for x. So that is 2 times 4x minus 5, which is 8x minus 5, and you can't do a thing with it. Do you understand that? Now, if they ask for domain and range on that, the domain is, um, I'm going to change the domain. It's this. Do you remember what this means? All real numbers. Um, the range is also all real numbers if you get a polynomial. Okay? Now, if I turn it around and I say g of f of x, now I'm going to put the x into the f function first. So I put the x into this one first. And I get exactly that back. Now, if I put a, if I put a y in here, it would have been 2y minus 5. Okay, if I put x squared in, it would have been 2x squared minus 5. It's whatever I put in for x, whatever this value is, right? And then g of that is, I'm going to take all of this and put it into that x. So I'm going to have 4 times 2x minus 5, which is 8x minus 20. Does that make sense to you? Okay. All right. Um, I want you to take a look at just real quickly, number 38. 
We are doing the even this time, Jaws. So you can, I, I don't know if you're going to just say what now. I don't know how you're going to change the assignment, but you'll find a way. Yeah. I want you to look at 38, the direction saying find f of g of x and g of f of x if they exist. It says state the domain and range for each composed function. Is your state the domain and range for each composed yes. function crossed out? Yes. Okay, I don't, I, I want you to lightly cross it out in pencil. We're not going to do domain and range, but it would be all real numbers, okay? All right? Let's take a look at 38. It says f of x equals, f of x equals x squared plus 6x minus 2, and g of x equals x minus 6. Is this true? Yes. Okay. Oh, maybe I do one more complicated than this. No, it's all right. Well, That's all you told me. we're going to 54 even, and I see, uh, oh. I see, uh, Now yeah, let's do this one. Okay, so then it says find f of g of x, right? Okay, I might only do one of these. I'm going to put x in the g function. So when I put that in, I get this, x minus 6, right? So now I'm going to go f of x minus 6. Now here's the part that's tricky. This x minus 6 goes into every x on in this one. So it goes x minus 6 quantity squared plus 6 times x minus 6 minus 2. You got that? So I have to FOIL this, Jaws. When you FOIL that, you get x squared minus 12x plus 36. You can check me on that when you FOIL it. And then I'm going to distribute the 6 through here. So I get 6x minus 36 minus 2. Did everybody catch that? I foiled that in my head. So I'm going to go plus a negative, plus a negative, and plus a negative. So I have x squared, a negative 12x plus 6x, I believe is a negative 6x. Is that correct? Yes. 36 minus 36 is 0, plus a negative 2. Yes. All right? Now, the other way is much easier, if you've considered it. I'm going to put x in the f function, so it looks identical to this, right? And then I'm going to take the g function in that. So g of, um, whoops, g of, uh, x minus or x squared plus 6x minus 2. Sorry about that. So I'm going to take all of this and put it into that x. So I have x squared plus 6x plus a negative 2 plus a negative 6. That's this right here. So my answer is x squared plus 6x plus a negative 8. You can see that that one's much easier, correct? All right. Yeah, so those are the, those are both your answers. Those are, those are both your answers. Yeah. Now I'm going to move the book over and talk to you for just a minute about the next ones. <coughs> I don't know if you can see it very well. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah. You see this? <coughs> okay. Can you look in your book? Yeah. All right. See this table? You're going to use that. So like 47, it says find f of g of a negative 2, correct? I'll use my pencil here. See a negative 2? I go and I put it in the g function. So I go over here to x is a negative 2, and I go over to the g function. What's the value? 1, right? And then <clears throat> 1 goes into the f function. So I go back over to x. x is 1, and I go to the f function. So my answer is 2. You understand that? Okay? All right. Now, <clears throat> on this one, 44, uh, I'm going to put 3a in for x. 
in the f function. So I would put that right here. And then I'd take that answer and put it in the f function. So it's, it's kind of a lot of maneuvering. So you say you put 3a into the g function? Uh, 3a into the g function. Oh, I'm sorry, I put it in the wrong function. You're right, 3a into the g function right here, so I'd get a negative 6a plus 1, and then I'd take a negative 6a plus 1, and I'd put it into the f function. Thank you, Bo, for calling me on that. I kind of was around. Now let's go to this one. I don't know if you can see it very good, but you can look at it on your in your book. We do f of 1 first, so we find the f function, which is this line. How do I know it? It's labeled f of x. I go over to the x on the x is 1, so I go over to the 1 spot, I count up to the, I go up to the line, and that's up 3. So my answer for f of 1 is 3. You see that, Harper? Mm -hmm. Then I take that 3, Harper, and I put it in the g function. Mm -hmm. So I go 1, 2, 3, and I go down and find the value of that, and it looks like it's negative 5. You see how that works? Are you okay, Greeley? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so your assignment then your assignment if Jaws can get it right we'll see I don't know she might make up something we're gonna have to make sure that she I'll have to watch it this time is page 325 numbers and I got it on video so I got to be careful right 16 through 54 even 16 through 54 even and uh, I'll let you work on it tomorrow if you work on it. Wednesday's win time, so it's due Thursday. But if you're not going to work tomorrow, I'll move on. Okay? Had that problem today in another class. So, all right, there's your assignment. I'll wait until she writes it down. There you go.